Hello everybody, welcome to PCR Lesson 101. Today, I'll be sharing with you about polymerase chain reaction process, also known as PCR, as well as some of the applications in the industry that uses PCR. PCR is a revolutionary breakthrough in the fields of biology and medicine. It is a method to copy DNA molecules and it creates DNA in large quantities, which is sufficient to study. It is the most commonly used technique in modern molecular biology lab and some applications of PCR include disease diagnosis such as AIDS as well as forensic science analysis. A typical PCR protocol for a 500 base pair amplicon is as shown. Now let's move on to the process of PCR which involves the three steps, denaturation, primer annealing and extension. The first step of PCR is the denaturation of double-stranded DNA in 94 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Celsius for about 15 to 60 seconds. The second step will be primer annealing for forward and reverse primers in a range from 50 to 60 degrees Celsius for another 15 to 60 seconds. This step requires the designing of primers. For designing primers, Primers with 18 to 30 nucleotides are typically used and GC content is approximately 40 to 60%. The melting temperature is usually around 55 to 58 degrees Celsius and it should be similar for all primer pairs. The third step would be the extension by tag DNA polymerase in 72 degrees Celsius for about 1 to 2 minutes. The duration is dependent on the length of the amplicons, 1 minute per kilo base pair. During the extension step, the tag DNA polymerase binds to each PCR primer and begins adding nucleotides in the 5' to 3' direction, forming new strands of DNA. In PCR, two controls are usually essential for monitoring the success of PCR. The positive control is used to check if the PCR conditions used can successfully amplify the target sequence, while the negative control, which contains no template DNA, is used to ensure that the solutions used for PCR have not become contaminated with the template DNA. For visualization, the PCR sample will then be added with DNA loading dye and it will then be put into the agarose gel electrophoresis and run for about 40 minutes. After the 40 minutes, the gel will be put under the UV exposure and the gel picture can be obtained. For purification, the desired DNA band has to be located under UV light. It will then be cut out by using the gel extraction tool. The DNA is then purified from the gel materials using a gel extraction kit. So now that you know how the process of PCR works, I will now tell you more about how this process is often applied in the industries. PCR can be used in different occasions for different purposes. The main purposes of using PCR are PCR sequencing and gene cloning, detection of mutations or investigation of genetic diseases, and genetic fingerprinting in forensics and paternity testing. PCR is widely used in genetic research through rapid amplification of tiny fragments of DNA, the study of gene expression patterns to check for specific genes, and DNA sequencing using segments of DNA from an area of interest to study genetic mutations. Projects such as the Human Genome Project has also used PCR to indicate the presence of a specific genome from a particular clone after cloning genes. In the field of medicine, PCR plays a part through the identification of certain bacteria, viruses, and fungal and parasitic infections. In dentistry, PCR is also a standard tool for managing certain conditions such as periodontal disease, caries, oral cancer, and endodontic infections. The most widely used application of PCR is in the forensics industry. Because of the PCR-based DNA fingerprinting being available, PCR became an invaluable tool in forensic investigations. DNA fingerprinting can be very useful as tiny fragments of DNA can be isolated from a crime scene and be compared to a huge database of the DNA of criminals and at the same time rule out any suspects whose DNA do not match the PCR results. Paternity testing is also made possible 
through PCR by matching the DNA from an individual to the other test party to determine if they are their sibling, child or parent. That's all for this lesson. I hope you have learned more about PCR and how it can be used in our daily lives. See you next time. Bye!